Yo, what's the word? You rocking with Vintage? You be fucking with Dover Don't right now? You watching Purple World? Get with niggas or get lost. <laughs> I call up play, cause that nigga don't play. Honey, yo, ass on the shoreline. I'm in the bed, you like shoreline. I'm in the sky, see skyline. Stop marketing business on my mind. Hey, I can tell you not my kind. What's good, Dover Don't? Purple World, episode 104. I hope I got the number right. Um, today we got to switch up. I know a lot of y'all been in my DMs getting mad that Pink World's been absent, and a lot of y'all also been getting mad that we haven't had female guests. So today I think we got the perfect guest to set the tone, Miss Vintage Lee up hey. in the building. What's well, good? So, what, I got to put these headphones on? You don't have to put them oh, on. Okay. That's normally okay. if there's other sessions and we just put it on the cancel. Bet, 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 bet. But what's good? What's the word? Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. This is long was, overdue. I, I was saying overdue. off camera, shout out Chris, my cousin, bro, yep, put yep. me on years ago. <laughs> Long overdue interview, but what's good? You're, you're normally not in Massachusetts from what I could tell. What's the word? I'm actually here, but I'm back. I've been back for a little second. Just chilling, kicking it. How's it feel being back home? It's nice. It's a switch up. And you were in LA or where were you? Yeah. You were in LA? Yeah. No, Atlanta, Atlanta. Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you travel around a lot? Because you just stumped up on that question. I'm assuming you'd be everywhere. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of all the places you be um traveling around to, where's like been your favorite place to work out of as of recently? Um, I mean, I really like Atlanta. Atlanta. I just like the um, infrastructure there. Um, I just more so like that you could go out any time of the day and just go get fucked up. I mean, obviously you could do all that here, but it's like I don't know, it's just different spots. Over here is like whack compared to everyone else. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I want to call it whack. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nah, it's different. We're I getting mean, there, but yeah. like still, it's just. You know what I mean. <laughs> Still, like, because ev everybody talks about it. Literally, every single person that comes on this podcast mm -hmm. that has been to all those places, they're just like, bro, Massachusetts just ain't it compared to the other places. Like, people wise, talent wise, mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. got that. But as far as like nightlife, et cetera, we don't got that. Oh, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't yeah nah. The nightlife could be better. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. How is it coming back, though? Like, is it a huge change? When's the last time you were back before, too? No, I was always coming back home. Always like, coming back home. Every three weeks. Oh, you Every come month. I, like when I was yeah when I was in Atlanta or in Atlanta or wherever. So I was uh, coming back home. Yeah, so I wasn't like yeah gone. You feel me? No, getting overly homesick. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody that's watching this though, I always end up jumbling up and forgetting this. Anybody, if this is their first time ever seeing you, mm -hmm. just give them like a rundown of you as a person, what you're about, yada yada yada. Word, what's the word? My name is Vintage Vintage Leon from Roxbury. You feel me? I'm about having a good time. I like turning up. I like drinking, smoking, chilling. Yeah, that's what the fuck I'm about, really. <laughs> From your Instagram and everything I've seen over the past couple of years, it uh -huh. literally just seems like natural just vibes yeah. <laughs> throughout everything. It just seems like you're having fun with shit. Yeah, I be vibing. But I think that's like the general perspective, you feel me? Yeah. Like, when I'm with my niggas, like, I be very goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that's what I, I mean, though, like the whole imagery you can't tell the goofy sense 100 percent, but it just seems like you're just having fun with it like it doesn't yeah. seem like an overly forced image it doesn't seem like you're doing shit because you have to it just seems like you're just having fun with i appreciate shit. that yeah i'm just being myself uh, i appreciate that thank you hey no problem that's the number one way to be <laughs> but i know you've probably answered this a thousand times on podcasts and i hate to even ask you it but how'd you get in the music in the first place and sort of just background on your early life before music i always call it the superhero origin story yeah um, how to get into music? Um, I always like music. Uh, I grew up around like just hearing like all types of like oldies and shit in the crib, like the OJs or I mean, I was about to say Rick Ross, <laughs> <laughs> Rick James, James Brown. Um, you know all that shit, to, like just everything. So I always like music. And then my sister bought me like a little microphone when I was like three. It was like a Winnie the Pooh. That's the that's the pink one with the low. <laughs> yeah, it was a Winnie the Pooh mic, and you could like sing into it, and it was like. So I was always, like, singing to that, making songs. And then I was, like, a teenager. And me and my cousin, Maisha, we were just always writing rhymes in a book. And my mom was still my book because she didn't like what I was talking about <laughs> and shit. <laughs> so I was like, all right, fuck it. Um, but I just kept doing it. I would freestyle on the bus. Um, I just really was always into music. So I just kept doing it. And then when I was 16, I started recording at the studio just for fun type shit. Like, I would take the train out to uh, Quincy, walk to the studio, um, do that. Which yeah. studio in Quincy? Uh, oh, it's okay, actually my um, it's called Elite. It's called Elite Studios huh. from like back in the day. Like not back in the, like I think they might have closed like maybe five years ago, six years ago. Uh, but it's by two twins. But huh. it's, it's my sister's man's, my brother-in-law. So uh, I was going to his yeah. spot. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So how to go from that? Because it sounds like at first it 
started out as like a casual thing. Where was the point where it kind of turned into more serious? Um, it just kind of became serious, I guess. You feel on me? accident, like yeah, like because I was um I was doing little like demos and shit for like labels when I was seventeen. Gotcha. So I'll send them over to them, and they'd be like, "Oh, we need this type of thing. We need this type of thing." But eventually, I just didn't really like it no more. I felt like I wasn't being myself. So um, then I graduated high school, and then I was like, hmm. And then I was in the mall one day, and I ran into my manager, Charlia, and she was at work. And I was just like, yo, like, I think I just asked her, like, yo, what are you doing next week or in two weeks or some shit like that? And she was just like, nothing. And I was like, I will right, well, pull up to the studio. Like, just come pull up to the studio. Because when I was in high school, I would still always send her my shit because we went to school together. So I would send her the little demos I was making. Uh. So, oh, shit. Wait, wait. But, yeah, so we went to the studio one day, and then I made my first song that I put out called Right Now. And then from there. Just kept going. Yeah, just kept going with it, yeah. So you got a day one management situation. Yeah. That's fire. Because normally any management situation I hear nine times out of ten does not go that way at <laughs> all. It does not go that way at all. So, But... You just said at 17 you were writing songs for labels? Yeah. How the fuck did you even find out about that so young? Because I feel like I know people that don't find out about that until they're like 10 years deep into their music uh, journey. Um, um, it's funny. I, we was just, I was just talking about this. Uh, do you remember Dat Piff? Yeah. So I was just like always going Dat Piff or YouTube or um, there's like another website at the time. I forget. But or my mixtapes or something. And they had like all these beat tapes on every platform mad beat tapes i think it was called like got instrumentals huh. so every week they put like a got instrumentals volume whatever they went up to like 200 or some shit and i would just listen to the whole pack and i would write in my little notebook the little beats and shit and then but they leave an email sometimes some of the producers uh. left their email so i email i would just kept emailing the producers like yo and then one of them hit me back and then we just started cooking up back and forth like that so that was my introduction crazy. I was going to say, that's that's a pretty crazy introduction because, like I said, most people don't think about songwriting for other people until they their dreams don't work out, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. No, I, honestly, I was just, I think it was a, I was like, oh, like, I didn't know how shit works. So I was like, let me hit them up or hit you up and, like, let me just see what happens. And then uh, it's like, okay, like, yeah, well, let's see what you got. Like, come write, come cook. But, like I said, I didn't mind it. But at that time, I was still trying to figure out, like, the shit I had going. What do you feel like early on in your career, like before you even started working with her, what do you think your biggest obstacle was? Well, I started working with her before I even put the oh. first song, well, when I put the first Fair. song. Fair. But, so. So I guess, because you guys have been doing stuff for a minute, if you want to say your first year of like actively dropping, what would you say your biggest hurdle was at that point? Take a second to think about it. Now I'm vibing with the music in the background. Low key. I feel <laughs> that like beats for you. Like, like, <laughs> that beats being made for you. So shit. I don't know if I can rap over that. That's not like so. <laughs> but now that's it's vibey. Um, the biggest obstacle though within the first year, I probably would say. I don't know. I really couldn't even answer that because I just felt like shit was just going so. Within the first year, I put out my first song. Then I put out anything's possible. Like, what was it? Like a couple months later, maybe like six months later. So I guess the biggest obstacle is like, oh, where am I going to put this music? Like, how do I get it out there to where the point that people can hear it? So I was like looking up all the blogs in the city at the time, and I would find their email or the submission page. I'm putting the shit in there. I'm sending it to everybody in the city. So I guess I guess that was the biggest obstacle. Figuring that part of it out. Yeah, but then people ended up paying me back like, hey, yeah. So I was like, okay, cool. And then at the time, there was also one van, like a Brockton Media page. I think like Giles Shout ran it. Shout out Giles, yeah. Felix, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just would, like, hit him up. That's how I even met him. Or even started talking to him was because I was like, yeah, I know that's a pop in, like, media source right now. So let me hit them niggas up. So, yeah. It's funny because I always would hear the stories about One Van for mm-hmm. mad long. And I asked Giles a couple times about it off camera, but I had, yeah. like, the first conversation with him. Sometime during – we did Giles' interview during the summer, right? I think it was I don't I can't even remember because mm-hmm. how many episodes, but the last one I did with him, we ended up talking about it. And I finally got to like because I wasn't in the scene at that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I finally got the rundown, and I was like, "Damn, bro, how the fuck did you end up being a rapper?" Yeah, I think <laughs> I, I think I like found out about that at the very tail end type shit, but because a lot of people didn't really know that it was him running it, as far as I'm aware. From I don't even know how I found out that, bro. I found that out. I was just uh, stalking. So besides that, getting the over that mm-hmm. hurdle, mm-hmm. what do you think? the biggest things that you guys had to figure out? Because obviously you're musically inclined since you were young, but 
the hardest part is everything but the music for the artist. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, and you guys were friends for a while, you said, right? Yeah. So how did you guys go about, like, figuring all the other annoying-ass shit out? Because talking about this, worrying about hitting up local platforms, and then you got a song in Euphoria. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I'll say, like, well, at one point, like, the music, like, at one point, the music was kind of a, not the problem, but I, I like to just rap. So at one point, it was like, all right, like, we got to form these hooks, nigga, like, still just rap. You got to form them hooks, down. nigga, right? Yeah, <laughs> so that was a, I was like, yeah, that was a thing. But um, what was the main question? Oh, you said, how do we? <laughs> hold on, I got to blow this book out. Also, too, I know I said no smoking. You guys can vape in here, though. Oh, um, we don't do that. No Where's the vaping. camera at? We don't do that. Zoom in on me when I'm saying <laughs> no. the shit. We don't do that. Don't vape around me. Don't. None, none of that. Damn, I gotta put my vape away. I mean, this is your space. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, <laughs> but you know, what? Like that's like a flavor of vape. It's just menthol. Menthol. It's gross. You're bugging. I started smoking these shits when I was like 16, and I wish I didn't. You so be better off smoking cigarettes, bro. No cigarettes. And I don't even. I don't even endorse cigarettes. Cigarettes. I just hate the smell. <laughs> The smell and the taste is awful. Listen, hey, I ain't here to judge you. It's a free space, baby. I ain't here to judge you. Um, but no, I was just talking about like navigating the industry in general, yeah. like all the figuring out sync placements, figuring out how to properly roll out a song, yeah. all that. Okay. In terms of the rollout, I just feel like that's something that we figured out early. Uh, I just feel like that's just something we perfected kind of early. But other than that, my head was always like, "All right, how am I going to get this in the proper places that it needs to be heard?" That it the space that it needs to be in, because I don't just put it out and then, which I would love to do, but, like, my head was always, like, all right, where are we going to, because when I came out, it was, like, Stiz, Michael, uh, Lino, Christmas, oh, I said Michael, sorry, OG, a.k.a. Marquise, um, and they were just moving a certain way, so everything just went, so I was, like, okay, well, like, how am I going to do that in my own way and take that energy? So, yeah, yeah I guess the next obstacle was, all right, where are we going to, like, I think Fader was popping at the time and shit like that, all right, how are we going to do this, how are we going to do that? And then that's when the next part of the team ended up popping up again, just for me dropping music and shit like that. Fire. Yeah. You know what's like annoying about that time period of music? Not annoying, but I feel like we were developing a Boston sound. Mm-hmm. And then you guys like all scattered. And then the younger generation, there's just no cohesion with the sound. But every, like everyone you just described, it's like you guys all had your own sounds. But I feel mm-hmm. like we had like a Boston sound, if you know what I mean. Um. Kind of. I don't know if I would call it a Boston sound. I would say shout out to T-Watt because he was constructing, I guess, a lot of, like, even before I came into the picture. Like, that's how I even knew about T, I think. So um, when you have a producer producing for multiple yeah. people, uh, some of the kits and shit like that are going to be the same. Well, the drums are this or that. So it might sound like, oh, okay, this is one sound. But I feel like everybody just got their own, their own groove type shit. I don't want to ask this towards the end, but... Because you've seen, like, so much in the scene. What's your thoughts just from when you first, like, became aware of all the artists in the city and mm-hmm. then watching where everybody is now, the overall growth of the scene? I think it's fire. Um, I think it's fire. I think they have, like, a lot, uh, like, what's going on right now, they have, like, a lot more accessibility to shit, um, which I think is dope. And there's a lot of more cohesiveness, working together, cooking up together. I think that's also fire. Um, you have things like... Uh, I'm like really bad with listening to <laughs> while I'm talking. Uh, what's the sh- what's uh, the chamber? You got the chamber, oh, the chamber right now, and then they got the podcast, and then you got. Um, there's so much different shit. Now. Yeah, there's so much different shit. Um, you just have like a whole bunch, of way more DJs, like a lot of fire DJs, like female DJs. I think this shit's fire. Uh, like Ray Vino, like a lot more female artists. So, so she just had her for her by her show, uh, mad female uh, artist. So I think shit like that's fire. So I think the growth is definitely dope to see. One thing too, you're saying that it's fire. Everybody has been talking about it past year. Low key, the females been kicking the dudes' asses in the scene the past year. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Like as far as the sense of people that are like taking the shit full throttle. The females have been killing it. I wish I went to that show that you were talking about, the Sosa one, because yeah, I saw yeah. that shit being promoted crazy. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how is it for you to see that? Because I feel like it definitely, I know I've only been in the scene for like four or five years, and mm-hmm. it wasn't like that when I got in it, mm-hmm. but everybody's been talking about that part of it recently. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, even when I first started getting asked this question, like, oh, how do you feel being like a female and a male dominated? Like, I don't look at 
female rappers like, oh, that's a female rapper versus that's a dude rapper. Not like she's a rapper and she's doing her thing. She's working just as hard as you and she's doing, you feel me? If niggas yeah. feel like, oh, that's buzzing right now and I fuck with that more than I, then she's just a more popping rapper. I don't be like, oh, she's a, like, oh, that's a, I don't do that yeah. personally. I don't like that. Cause no. It's just like a way of separating shit. Like, nah, she's doing what she got to do. She's doing it. Like, nah, I only said it because that's the thing. Like, people normally do separate it, and they'll be like, "Oh, she's a, she's a female rapper." Yeah, like, oh, she's the best female rapper. But like, nobody nah, could like, say that because yeah. the the females been working harder than the fucking dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, straight up. Yeah. Like as of lately, another question too, because they normally ask this on the girl podcast but lexi and maddie bro i'm sorry that i'm doing this if you guys get mad at this and you're watching this but it was long overdue but they would always ask just about the typical of being a female in the industry and you kind of just said it yourself you never really looked at it like that but i kind of want your perspective on that if you've had any situations where you've been treated differently or anything like that um, no not really Treated differently? No. Yeah. Um, uh, I wouldn't say treated differently. I could say maybe, like, maybe niggas think they could play a little more or get it, but, like, I always, I check shit immediately, call shit out. Like, I'm not one of them, so I would say maybe that, but I don't think, which is maybe, like, once or that? twice, but not, like, oh, like, you know? You never had the, um, I know the biggest thing that every girl that used to come on this podcast would complain mm. about is being a female artist, and they would say that they'd be in the studio, mm -hmm. and the dudes come in and they say hi to everybody but you. You ever have to deal with that? Well, like I'm like a stud, you feel me? So, <laughs> so I, I'm not like I don't know. So it's like a little different. Like little different. say what's up, yeah. but also if you don't say what's up to me. Like I ain't, I'm not like it's the proper thing to walk into the room yeah. and say what's up to somebody. But even me before, like a couple of years ago, like or if I, like, when I was a teenager or whatever, like I might not say what's up to everybody. Not even on a rude shit, just. I don't know. I don't know you. Excellent. I don't know. What, I don't know. So uh, until I see, it's cool. So relaying back to the music a little bit, how'd you go about getting your sound down? Because I know you talked about working with producers and stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that that was a long journey <laughs> to figure that out. Um, yeah, so sound in terms of just like, like just getting the sound down pack. Because if you were started singing when you were three years old mm -hmm. and then you were making music in high school, I can mm -hmm. guarantee you that sounds completely different than what you're making now. Yeah, because, like, that was all, like, YouTube-type beats or, like, yeah. a beat tape or something like that. You feel me? It wasn't, like, a producer sending me beats that they just made, like, fresh. So, um, You think the producers helped out the most with that? Yeah, because kind of, yeah, but they're still, like, Sending you things and you still have to figure out like, all right, do I like this or not like this? But I'm very like hands on. Uh, like I'm always I have a I have a hands on in the piece of the beat. Like I'm not touching the keyboard, but I'm like do this, do this, rearrange that, yeah. like turn this down, do that. Like, yeah, so I'm very hands on with that. So your creative process, you're are you hands on with everything? Like when it comes to visuals, all of that. Um yeah, like I like to have a say or like get my idea or get my input. So like you feel me? Because otherwise, like it'll just be like someone just telling you do this, do that, do that. And I can get, like, a little weird because I'm like, nigga, this is my art. You telling me to do, <laughs> do this, do that, do this? I don't know. So if we could collab and work together, then I fucks with that. So what about, like, getting your voice down and stuff and figuring out what genre? Did you always know what genre you wanted to do, or did that kind of come along? Well, more stuff? like, I can't, like, sing, sing, you feel me? So I knew I wasn't ever going to be, like, a singer or nothing like that. So I knew I was going to be, like, a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly knew that. Yeah. Um, but I guess the style of rap, I don't know. I just had to keep hearing sounds, I guess, basically. Because I was, when I was doing like little freestyles and writing the shit, I was doing it to whatever. Like, uh. there was no specific sound. So. What would you say? I know you touch on influences a little bit, but what would you say your biggest influences are as it, you were young? I was young? Yeah, like before you started, like when you really locked in and you were like, I really want to do this music shit, if you could say at that point in your life, if there were three people that inspired you then, and then maybe even if there's new inspiration that you have now. Um, I can't really say there's like three people that made me want to lock in, but around that time, a lot of shit I was listening to was like uh, Lil' Kim, Missy Elliott, Trina, uh, 50... Dipset, um, listen to a lot of old school shit, and then Wiz dropped. I was bumping a whole lot of fucking Wiz, uh -huh. bro. 
uh, Cardo's beats. I don't know. Just anything that I thought was cool or different. or Like, I literally always loved music. I was checking the music websites every day for new music and downloading the shit. Like, so I like everything. What about, like, in the studio... Like, if you go get on a song in there, mm-hmm. what's your process like then? You a freestyler? You like to have, if you were, well, we'll say a different session, like typical vintage session. Uh-huh. Do you cook at the crib? Do you cook at studios? Do you write before? Do you freestyle? Like, what's your process like making a song? Uh, I guess it does, no matter where I'm at, I guess I can just, I like to listen to the beats. Typically, if I start rapping on the beat within the first, like, 10, 15 seconds, I like it. And then just have the beat loaded up. I'll probably do, like, two freestyles to it. And then, yeah. Just figure out after that. Yeah, it's like kind of like I finish it or like right then or like like I did a song called Odds and Evens. It's produced by Cave. Um, we did that Shout like Cave. We did that like one and a half takes. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I and keep I, forgetting that Cave produces until you yeah. just said that. So it's like I just heard the beat and then I was like, well, let's fuck with this. Loaded it up and just did it. Damn. Yeah. So if you don't get a song done in that first session, nine times out of ten, is that never seeing the light of day or getting finished? Um, not not getting finished, but it's like I don't know. I like to feel that vibe that I'm in right then and there. Nah. Yeah. How big's your vault? <laughs> I have, honestly, I have like a bunch of shit. <laughs> me and Jordan. I don't know if you know Jordan. Jordan never died. Uh, no. he produces. Uh, he produced like a lot of shit for me. Half my catalog. Um, we were just going through a bunch of shit the other day, and I was like, damn. Damn. You got mad songs. Yeah, I was like, wow. I'm like, damn, why didn't I put this out? <laughs> you haven't dropped since um the Uno video, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a new something. got a new uh track coming up soon. Need for Speed. Fire. Yeah, video already done. Fire. Yeah. yeah. I normally I would ask the upcoming releases at the end, but I know at the beginning I was like, "You have anything coming out?" And you just started yeah, saying mad to, different yeah, shit. Yeah, my fault. I was like, well, I thought you actually that," but then no, I'm like, "Wait, before. the camera yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah, on." Yeah, that yeah. was before, but no. You you said like off camera you just started listing shit that was coming out. <laughs> <laughs> but actually before we get into the future stuff, we got to talk about that Uno video. We got to talk about the Uno video. How did that come about? Uh so uh, we did the song Shoreline uh in Atlanta. Um and it just was fire. Um and V Live, uh, other co-manager at the time, uh he knows uh we was just trying to like shop the song around basically. Um, and then Uno ended up hopping on it. He came to Boston, That's fire. hit the studio, <clears throat> and then shot the video. So That's fire. How was it putting out that record? Were you satisfied with everything? It was fire. I, um, that's one of my favorite records. I really like it. <clears throat> I think it's just like a good time, good vibe. Uh, um, yeah. From everything you're saying, it seems like that's leading up to a project. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, let's get more into the buildup. What else? You just had another video. I forget the name of it. But you just Need for Speed. Video. Yep. Need, for, Need speed. for Speed coming out soon. Video already done. You feel me? And then after that, we got, well, shortly after that, at some point, we got the Grease Pack. That's the tape. Fire tape. Fuego. I cannot wait for y'all niggas to say this shit. Um, we got the Grease Feast. Um, that's like a weed-infused dinner. Infused dinner. Yeah, we had one. Uh, we had one in January, I believe. So, so it's a weed infused dinner. What the uh, hell? It was three courses, everything infused. Yo, um, what? Yeah. And How then, the fuck you come up with this idea? <laughs> this shit sound dope as shit. Yeah, I like to eat and I like to get high, and Yo. I also like to party. So it's like that's basically your album release party. Well, no, in that's gonna that's like a thing that's gonna consistently happen. We oh. had the first one in January. We got the next one coming up soon. And then right after the feast is a party. So the first one we had Devo, Alondra, and Super Smash Bros. DJ right after with, like, weed-infused cupcakes. How did I not hear about this? I don't know, bro. You got to come to the next I one. Dude, this shit sounds yeah, mad we, fun. Uh, it was what? free weed. We gave away <laughs> free weed. We had vendors there with, like, weed drinks and shit like that. This shit sounds fire. Yeah, it was a vibe. So, yeah, that's the next joint coming up, too. Grease Feast. So That sounds like a lot of high people. No, nah, yeah, everyone was blasted. <laughs> That's the goal, though, you know what I mean? <laughs> that shit sounds fun as shit. What made you think of that, though, out of everything? Well, because, because that's unique as shit. Well, yeah, but like I told you, I feel like we like got down the rollout part yeah. of like just doing fun activities or like activations to get people like outside, yeah. you feel me? So I was like, all right, well, what's this activation going to be for this tape? Because for my last tape, Draw 2, we did like a Uno... Uh, 
like a Uno competition at a restaurant. So there was bar, uh, drinks and shit like that. Then we did the release party at the W. Mad different like stations of shit to do. So I was like, okay, like what's something we could do this one that will like enhance that experience even more. So. I want to run through these events because all of these events sound cool as shit. Wait, what the fuck? So you said the one that you, the weed one, you mm-hmm. did the first one January, this yeah, January? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how did that go? Like all around? How was the results? It was lit. That? It was a really good time. I had a lot of fun. It was my first time doing something like that. So I had a really good time. How stressful was it planning it? It was, you know, it's crazy. It wasn't so stressful planning it, but like actually at the event, it's like stressful because I was like, damn, okay, I got to make sure I'm getting high. But once I got high, I was able to relax. <laughs> and I let people do their own thing. And then I was like, oh, I right, survive. It's cool. We chilling. So, yeah. How'd you guys go about prepping that many edibles? Um, so I had my sisters cook the food because uh, they have a catering company. Uh, my sister, my oldest, my sister Chanel cooked the, uh, the desserts. So we had like a bunch of cupcakes. During the, uh, during the dinner, we did a pound cake. And then during the party, we had like 70 cupcakes, different flavors and shit like that. Jesus Christ. And then my other sister, Trina, cooked the, um, all the food. So, yeah. I'm definitely, next time you do one of these, I I'm better tell see you. it. Oh, yeah, yeah pop I'll, out. This shit sounds pop fly. Out. You smoke? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah well, yeah. why you got that pen then? <laughs> <laughs> I got to go to work in like an hour. I got, literally right after the podcast, I got to go to work. That's oh, why. Oh, you got to go to work? You yeah. got to do it overnight? Yeah, no, I just do like this, like two hour. I do delivery oh, work. Yeah, I just yeah, do like yeah, this yeah, little two yeah, hour yeah, shift. Yep, 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 yep. I was gonna say you're gonna be able to stay up. <laughs> you be smoking while you do delivery? Nah, nah. I can't. Nah, the amount of people that have got dr- fired. Oh, it's not an EMV. It's not an EMV. Yeah. Oh, okay. like no, it is in my oh, car. It is but walking MV. in the stops, oh, okay. people will always be getting <laughs> fired for that shit. Always. That's one thing I won't fuck around with. I hear that. Like, but this event sounds dope as shit. And what was the other event? Because that Uno shit that you just said, I want you to run down that because that sounded fire too. No, it was just like a Uno competition because the tape was called Draw 2. So on the uh, cover, I had like Uno cards. What the hell? So it was like, all right, like, let's do like Uno, basically. And at that time, I loved playing Uno, bro. I was on <laughs> niggas' ass, bro, for real. Yeah. What was the, um? you said something about stations and the party at the W, too. Oh, yeah, so that was an actual release party. Uh, so we had like a... Like a room with the with the video showing because we did like a little short story for the whole uh, tape. So the video had like all the songs in it. We had like a little, I don't know, there's like a basketball hoop there or some shit like that. Then we had like the bar with the drinks with the card and everything. Um, there's a couple other things. How do you guys like? Was that the first event? Would you say like first like mm. album besides like just like a regular show? I'm talking nah, about. Nah, because for my first tape we also did a release joint, but that was like a show. I think I had like. I don't know, but that one was like two. Damn. So you've been throwing events for a while now. Yeah. So you, every time you drop a project, it's just expected that there's going to be some sort of event with it. Yeah. Fire. Fire. That in-person interaction. That Actually, that's something I want to ask you about. How much easier do you think it is? I know this is like pretty self-explanatory, but mm-hmm. also a lot of people watching this don't get it for some reason. How much easier is it to gain a fan in person rather than online? Um... Well, like, I guess, like, it's better to be in person with people because, you know, you can have a conversation. Y'all could chop it up. It's like, oh, okay, this is a personable person. You feel me? But also, I feel like online these days, I don't know, I feel like online you could just gain follow mad quick. Yeah. Especially with little niggas brains and shit's mad fast. But, no, obviously, in person is way more, like, all right, it just feels a lot more genuine, yeah. especially if you're chill about it. Are you always someone that needs to do something for the fans every time when you do something? Um. Well, I like to. You feel me? Like, if you fuck with me, or you support me, or you just want to come out and have a good time, or you just fuck with the scene. Like, I like to do uh shit. Cause why not? Uh, yeah. So, what could people expect on the upcoming project too? Yeah. So, grease pack. <laughs> Zooming on me when I say that. Grease pack. <laughs> okay. Grease pack. That's all you can. Yeah. Give? Grease pack. Grease pack coming soon. Nah. Um. You can expect like a plethora of vibes. You feel me? I feel like my first tape was very raw. My second tape was more, like, relaxed because I felt, like, a little more relaxed at that point in life. And this one is more more raw. Just like, it's just a plethora of sounds, uh, some slow shit, some hard shit. Yeah, you know. What do you like making more of the slow shit or the hard shit? Honestly, it's, like, a, it's 50-50. 
Because I really, really like the vibes. Because I like the vibe. I like the beat that's just slow. You feel like your head's in the wind. You vibing. Got shorty <laughs> next to you, niggas. Walking a blunt. You feel like you that nigga. You feel me? I like making music like that. But also, like, I oh, shit, too. Yeah. What would you say your favorite part of an album rollout is? Or project rollout in general? Man, just finally getting that shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Put that shit out. That's my favorite part. Besides that, I'm talking about creative process. Um, <laughs> Getting it out is the, the sire relief. Now, the favorite part is like when you could pop that shit in the whip. Let me saying pop, nigga. God damn, you can't even pop nothing in the whip. When you could connect that Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, dogs. All right, nah, but the best part is we can like play it in this car, crank that volume up, spark up Lenini, nigga, put the windows down, have you a shot. And just really just play that shit, whether you're riding around the city or just parked. That's like, all right, it's done. Once you could hear it and it's see the little done. picture on the screen and shit. Yeah, and then you just play it through and it's like, I bet, like, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> How would you say, Um, obviously, it seems like you kind of already had shit down packed from the beginning. But what do you think your biggest point of growth has been from your first release till this upcoming release? Like, what are some things that you had to screw up on in the past in order to learn how to do it properly with your future releases? Um, the bumpy road. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just feel, well, I feel like there'll, there'll always be, even if it doesn't look like it, there'll always be a bumpy road. It's just how bumpy the road is about to be. You feel me? Um... But yeah, I just you just learn to move with things a bit smoother, better communication, plan shit out better. Um, really just make sure shit's prepared before you even do anything so that you can hit the dates that you have planned to execute. Um, just really being prepared, you feel me? I guess that's the biggest the biggest thing. Getting everything done beforehand. Yeah, and just patience also. Patience. That's something I gained. Talking about patience, what's kept you sticking in this so long? If you got into music at three years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, I mean, I was just fucking with it at that point. It was just something fun to do. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. It was just something fun to do. You feel me? But obviously, if you just keep going back to something, then you have a love for it. So I would just keep going back to it. There would be times when I didn't even think about music or nothing like that, besides listening to it for months on end, but then I'm writing music again. Like, when I was younger and I was getting and shit like that, so... Um, but yeah, I just kept coming back to it. So I was like, fuck it. I keep coming back to it. Like, let me just see what it could do. You ever have any moments where you almost quit? Nah, because I, I love it. I mean, like like I said, if you just know you're going to keep coming back to some shit, I'm not going to quit something I know I'm going to keep coming back to. But shit, it's like a bitch. It's like, it's like a bitch. It's like loving a bitch. Any, <laughs> you're going to gonna, you're gonna be annoyed with her at some point. You're going to cuss the bitch out. Like, bitch. I'll be back later. I need some space because you're tripping. <laughs> like, it's like that. You feel me? It's just like that. Because it's like, when you're an artist, you really love your art. Like, you really, really, really love your art. Like, that's just shit first. You feel yeah. me? So, yeah. How you heard all over creative blocks, if you've ever had any? You just got to do shit. What do you think the worst creative block you've ever been in was? And how did you get out of that? My worst creative block was when I fucked my foot up and I couldn't walk for almost two years. Damn. Yeah. And I fucked it up just because I wanted to roll an extra blunt before I went to bed. I had already smoked the blunt. I'm like, am I going to roll up another blunt? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to roll up another blunt. And I was just sitting there smoking. And I just, you know how you just be, like, relaxing and yeah. you, like, twist your, you just, you just stretch your foot out and shit like that? That's yeah. all I did. I just stretched my foot. What? Finished smoking my blunt. I got up and I, like, kind of fell. I'm like, wait, my foot sprain. Because I know what a foot sprain feels like. I played ball growing up. I'm like, my foot is fucking sprain, bro. Okay. Next day I went to the doctor. <clears throat> They're like, yeah, you got a sprain. They put me in a boot with no crutches. So that fucked my foot up even more. For two years? Well, yeah, when I came home like a week later because I was like, fuck this. I don't, I don't trust this health care, uh, you feel me? Then I got the crutches. But yeah, I was in PT for mad long. God damn. Mad x-rays, mad MRIs, nigga. And you couldn't even perform then, too. Yeah, I just couldn't do... Yeah. I've heard my foot like... I've performed before with a fucked up, with a boot on, too, and a cane. But this time was crazy, though. Like, a I couldn't boot? do nothing. Wait, you just breezed by. <laughs> I've performed with a boot on and a cane. Wait, yeah. What? yeah. You just breezed by that bad <laughs> casually. What the fuck? I went to New York one time with my mans. We just went in the middle of the night, and we stopped at the gas station at, like, the BK halfway in Connecticut. And I had to pee. So I, I was jogging to the gas station. It's probably, like, one block. 
And I don't know, bro. I just fell. I had, I had on the ones they wasn't tied, nigga. I just fell. <laughs> and I got up and I said, damn, my foot's fucked up. And I'm like, it'll be all right. We went to the club. We went to the hookah lounge after. I'm like, yo, my foot's fucked up, nigga. And I, I just took a, I just, I got her back on the bus. And I came home, nigga. I'm like, fuck that. And I had a boot. And then I performed with the boot on. And I had a cane, too, because I, I, need, I needed to be able to walk <laughs> through the crowd. <laughs> How the hell do you do that? You and Caso, Caso, I remember performing with crutches like a year ago. I'm like, mad I'm injury prone, bro. I'm <laughs> mad injury prone, sick prone, like Jesus yeah, Christ. ginger shots every day. Oh my god! Yeah. So that that probably be throwing you in the most creative blocks whenever you got to deal with shit like that. Yeah, well, not that time when I was I couldn't walk for like them two years. Yeah, I was. Yeah, man. You weren't making was, like any music. I was mad that. as fuck. No, I was, but it's just like a creative block. You know, you can't really do anything. You're just stuck in the crib. Yeah. In pain. Shh. Talk about being stuck in the crib. How'd COVID impact your workflow? I haven't asked somebody this in a while because COVID's like an afterthought at this point. But um, COVID was interesting too. You feel me? I just feel like that was a time where COVID was a time, but that was like wild, wild west. Like yeah. <laughs> that shit either made or broke people. Like straight up, either made people or absolutely broke them. I don't know. Like I didn't mind it because some people, when you went to COVID, you had all this extra free time. Like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? Like. But I was already just doing my own thing anyway, so that wasn't a transition for me. But, um, yeah, it just made me more of a germaphobe, bro. Like, nah, I don't sneeze in the air around me. I don't like none of that shit. Everybody got, like, PTSD or sickness after that shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody does. I remember being terrified. When they, like, first put on lockdown, yeah. I deadass thought the world was going to end. No, me too. Like... Oh, you know what's crazy? I didn't even answer the question. How did it affect the yeah, workflow? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just felt like everything was kind of just weird. Like, we, I even had, like, a show at Northeastern, like, right before, like, Man. right when COVID hit, when they closed everything down. So I didn't even get to do the show. That, that was, I was pissed off about that. Um, yeah, like, they, you really couldn't really do nothing. Really couldn't do no shows. I had to do, like, I put a video out, but we had to do it like a, um, like an animation. Damn. Because couldn't even... Go out to shit. Yeah, we did like a, uh, it was like a collab, but couldn't even link up with the person because like you're in LA, I, I'm not flying right there right now. Like, no, nah, that's yeah. slow. Um, and then like you could drop shit, but like if you're not, like it just depends on the climate. It's like, eh, I don't know if I'm really gonna drop. I can't be outside. I can't be people's faces. You feel yeah. me? So. God damn. Do you think that it helped you though? Like in the recording process, were you locked in recording a lot at that point? Or? Um. Uh, I'm not going to say it helped or anything like no. that. Because like I said, I was already, it didn't give me like, oh, all this extra free time. Yeah. I was already, already doing my, I already had that free time. Yeah. So, yeah. Damn. Damn. Now something I've been dying to ask about that I almost forgot to ask until I did one last little look through your Instagram and I'm like, thank God I remembered this. Oh man. Okay. Getting a song on Euphoria. Yeah. How the fuck was that like when you got the news about that? It was fire. But, you know, I we like we got the news, but we didn't know. Like, I don't know if we knew, like, like to like a week before, right? Like, there was talks of it. We knew about it, but, like, it wasn't confirmed for, like, a little bit like before. So I didn't really, I didn't want to get too excited and shit like that. But then we got the confirmation. I was like, yeah, boy. <laughs> I remember seeing that shit when it first happened. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. And was it season one or was it season two? Season two? Two, oh, so two, it was two, like two, already two, popping and two, stuff, two, two. so it wasn't where it was, it was already, like questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. probably were like, "Yo, this shit is fucking." That's like the biggest TV show to come out in the past like five years. Yeah, nah, bro, like, that shit was fire. Bro. Literally, I know, I know you're happy from seeing your face <laughs> in the background. <laughs> I knew you were happy about that shit. How'd that come Dubs. about though? Um, I feel like they just reached out and were like, "Hey, we want to put Damn. this song on." Damn. And then it was just like mad quick of a process, and then I was waiting for a second to just see like, all right, is it gonna confirm or? That's crazy. Because I feel like the season was already like going when they hit us up about it, right? It was just about to start. Damn. Yeah. That's fire as shit though. And Angus was in the scene, bro. Yeah. Angus was in the scene. R.I.P. Angus. It's crazy. R.I.P. Angus. If you. What was the movie I just watched? Oh, I know which movie you're talking about. I seen it. The I robbery seen it. one. I, yeah, yeah. That shit I didn't was watch good. it, but I read that Yo, shit. Watch but I was like, that damn, shit. I was like, damn, I can't watch this right now. Bro. Watch that shit. Okay, I'm telling okay, you, okay. that shit was crazy good. Okay, crazy okay, okay. fucking good. He was such a good actor. I wish he didn't die. He was like Max. my favorite actor to see in the past couple of years. Oh, where? Like, oh, that's what's up. You know the story of how they found him for Euphoria, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
Like, that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. Telling your younger self, if you would have told yourself, okay, I'm going to have songs and TV shows, I'm going to have features with X, Y, and Z, how do you think your 10-year-old self would feel about where you're at currently in your career? Um, oh, that sounds fire. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen somebody get this distracted by music. That's how not, I know that you're just a straight music junkie. Not like my ears are going to like hear different shit. Um, my phone's question. What would your 10-year-old <laughs> self think of where you're Oh, yeah. At? I don't know. I would be like, I bet. Say no more. Like, I always, I always knew, like, I was about to be on a regular shit or, like, I don't know. I just knew, like, I don't know what I was doing or about to do or, but I was like, oh, I want to be a doctor when I grow up or, oh, I want to be... Like, I just knew, like, I was going to be me. Not no traditional. So guy. I was like, okay, you're being you. Like, I love that. That's probably what my youngest self would say. Ah, right, you're being you. Bet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you have family that was supportive off rip? Or was your family, did you kind of have to prove yourself to your family? Um, I feel like families are normally the number one people to get in, f- in front of people's music dreams. That's why I'm asking that. Oh, for real? No, my mom's comes to everything. Like, even when I first started doing videos, like, she'd be like, oh, where's the video at? And I'm like... Nah, don't worry about it. It's like, <laughs> bro, she would pull up, like, her whip be way down the street. I wouldn't even see her, no. nigga. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? She showed me videos later. Like, yeah, I seen you. I'm like, oh, okay. Or like, even when I have shows and shit, she wants to pull up. Yeah. Even at my grease feed, she was there. I'm like, oh, you don't got, I'm like, it's mad weed. I don't want you. She's like, oh, I'm pulling up. I don't care. So, no, she was always supportive. So, that was definitely, like, a never, like, a man. worry or something. Yeah, my sisters, my siblings, my cousins, and, like, everyone just comes out with my friends. So, That's fire. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. I always hear creatives complaining about how they have to prove shit to their parents and the parents be up their ass when they yeah. first start shit. So thank God you didn't have to deal with that. Yeah. What about traveling? I want to touch more on that because you said Atlanta and L.A., you've been spending a lot of time, and then you come back here too. Where other places have you been, like, through music specifically? Um, and then what are the differences that you notice? I know we talked about it a little bit. I forget if it was on camera or off camera, but what are some of the differences amongst the different scenes that you've noticed? Um, like, in their current state or just at that time? Just in general, like, when you um, were there. Yeah. Uh, well, when I first started going out to L.A., that was, like, a difference for me. Like, that was kind of like a culture shock. I'm like, oh, okay, like, niggas interact with each other. Like, they say what's <laughs> up. They're like, oh, what's your Instagram? Like, so I, I like that a lot. And then I like the accessibility to, like, all the studios. And it's just, like, a lot of cooking up, like, just... I like all the parties and shit. Like, just something to <laughs> do at parties. all times of the day, you feel me? Um, I really like that. And then with Atlanta, same thing, but I feel like there's... I'm not going to say there's way more producers in Atlanta because I don't think that's the case, but it's just, like, way more central. And, like, literally you never know who you can end up cooking up with or the events you end up at. Um, but I guess the difference at that time would have been the willingness to work or, like, not even know anybody, but, like, you could literally not no the nigga or I could go up to someone and be like yo I'm vintage and it could be like someone who's huge but they're like all right come on let's go like let's fuck with each other let's go cook up yeah. and it's like I don't know you from uh, you don't know like but you're still gonna fuck with me you feel me like it wasn't like that but now here everyone's collabing working with each other so sorry uh, how um did you go about building those like fan bases and connections like you saying going to LA for the first time how did you go about just meeting random people was it really just that like meeting people on the streets and shit or well, no, but, like, if you're, like, at an event or something. At events and shit like that. Yeah. Damn. What about um, when you moved? What was, like, the determination that you wanted to move? Did you feel like you had to? You were kind of at, like, a ceiling in Massachusetts? Um. Well, yeah, because I think at, at that point I had already been back and forth to Atlanta, like, a couple times. Like, yeah. we went out there to cook up, and I'm like, all right, like, you know, so. Was it scary? Nah. Not at all? Nah. You seem like you have such a nonchalant, like, not give a fuck attitude about mad shit. <laughs> like, mad shit. You're just like, it wasn't scary. Like, I was chilling. Everything just seems like, for you, it's just, like, fun. And just, like, <laughs> a not give a fuck attitude at the same time. Nah, I mean, like, I give a fuck, but, like, I don't know. If I don't have, like, if it's not impacting me in a negative way... Like, especially at that time. At that point, I was just like, cool. Like, I right, like, I'm a young kid from Roxbury. I ain't really never been no fucking weird. Like, so fuck it. Yeah, we out here. We out here. We sleep on the couch on the floor. I don't give a fuck. Like, we just out. You feel me? And that's, at that point, that's what mattered to me. So I'm definitely going to be on some chill shit about it. Like, oh, I don't got to be in Roxbury? Oh, I don't got to be in this. Oh, say no more. And like, cool. So that's kind of just where the attitude comes from. Like, I'm just, yeah. 
but was it scary? Nah. And I, like I said, I was coming back home. Frequently. Yeah. Frequently. Or even when I was in New York, I was coming back home. Especially, I was coming back home a lot because you could just. Yeah, literally. Boom, 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 back and forth. But yeah, even from Atlanta, I was coming back home a lot. So. Nah. Never had to deal with the homesickness at all. Um. Yeah, with weed, I had to deal with homesickness because some of these fucking Atlanta, New York, bro, the weed situation out there is scary. Really? Scary. I get homesick for that. I'm surprised Atlanta's that bad with finding weed. Bro, they have bud, but like for a seventh, they're charging like 135. God damn. Yeah. What the fuck? Some of them. And that's like a lot of spray shit. At least if you want the gas, you feel me? I don't like uh, PK and shit like that. So I know plugs that sell weed for less than that out there, but like, nah. That's why I don't fuck with Florida. Florida be a bitch. Yeah, oh, word? Man. Yeah, even Florida, bro. All them southern states, bro. Yeah, and All it's just like the quality states. of the bud is, like, different. And you pay way more. Oh, and it's yeah, ass. you pay more. Like, yeah, I ended up finding a plug from New York, so I was paying East Coast prices with <laughs> East Coast bud. Damn. But that was lit. But other than that, yeah. What do you think? What's the conversation about the dis- the dispensary buds? Do you think, like how it's giving mad people anxiety and no, shit because they just keep making the shit strong? You think that shit's true? Strong? No, I don't fuck with the dispensary what? weed, bro. Nah, that that weed is mm-mm. really mm-mm. Oh, the highest I've been every single time has been dispo bud. You smoking the wrong bud, brother? I'm telling you, <laughs> dispo bud. Be nah, you definitely thing. smoking the wrong weed. I don't like dispensary weed. Really? Bro. I'd rather go to the plug right quick. I don't got to deal with the tax. Like. And a lot of that weed has just been sitting there for a mile long, bro. Like, the weed you just bought probably was done being harvested, like, a year a year ago. That shit just been chilling. I don't even think about and that And you got shit. it. It's all dry and shit. It's just chilling. I don't even it's not even the fresh crop. You're not even getting the fresh crop. You're just getting the shit they're trying to. I don't even think about that part of it. Yeah. I don't even think about that part of it. And then also, like, they can only, like, the percentage of the, like, that's inside the butt can only be so high. So, uh, I just don't, I just don't like dispensary butt, bro. But power to you, like I said, I ain't, I'm not gonna judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny question for you though. Yeah. Do you feel like weed is an essential part of your workflow? Essential? Because there's certain artists that like they that. can't make a song if they don't it's smoke. It's funny you say that. Um, are you got the bottle? Honestly, if you're down to take a quick little break, I gotta piss so oh. bad right now. <laughs> you can point shot. We'll be back. A few moments later. We back. Sorry for the quick little intermission. I forget exactly where we were at, but I know something we were saying previously that I wanted to ask you about. You're talking about being from Roxbury and then going uh-huh, and seeing uh-huh. this, and it's like, this is fire. Mm-hmm. What was the biggest shock when you started traveling, like getting out for the first time, seeing other cultures and shit? Um... Besides, like, the people being more accepting and stuff, what were some, like, big-ass culture shocks that you had traveling for the first time? Um, I know L.A. has mad. <laughs> That's why. Uh, I don't know. It was a lot of weird sh- I don't know. Just, like, a lot of weird shit. Like, L.A. just has a lot of weird shit. You meet the coolest and the weirdest fucking people. Yeah, like, it had, like, really cool vibes, but then the weird vibes were just mad weird. Like, one time I was on an Uber... And like I took a I took a pool one time, and this girl she was rashing the Uber driver. Then she like called the police. She was screaming. What she was like, fuck? "Let me out the car!" Like on the middle of the highway. She's yanking out the door and shit. And I'm like, then I don't know. And yeah, that was weird. And then before she got the car, she just said some really weird shit. Like, and I just had a couple occurrences like that. With just people. So that yeah. was that was weird. You have any funny run-ins with the LA cokeheads, bro? Everybody always have an L.A. Cokehead story. <laughs> That's why I had to ask. <laughs> Cave might have the record for the I'm best like, bro, one. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. You're not sharing. I any. wouldn't have. I wouldn't have nothing on that fucking level, nigga. <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, who's not a fucking cool kid out there? That's the question. Literally, like yeah. everyone. Yeah, everyone is. likes to go skiing. Every single time I have somebody on here, that when they're normally I don't even have to say anything. Then when they're talking about L.A., it just instantly jumps to talking about the L.A. Cokeheads. Yeah. Like, Cave told this story on here. Did you see the story? Yeah. You saw it? Yeah, yeah. I did watch the podcast. That shit was fucking hilarious. Stole a, to- what? Oh, st- stole a episode. <laughs> this dude talked about getting caught up with a chick at a party. Mm. Fucking fell down the stairs. His ankle monitor ripped off and then got caught. <laughs> 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 watch after this nah, pod, this watch the real. But then he ends it off. He's like, yeah, I got caught by one chick. And then I stayed up doing coke and playing Jenga with the bitch. <laughs> I was yo, like, yo. I can't, bro. <laughs> hey, if you can get through, nigga, you can get through. Um, but L.A., the fakeness in L.A., what about that? 
What do you think? Like, you be running in the, all the vultures out there? Because I feel like 90% of people out there, you got, like, 10% of real genuine people. Oh, it's good. <laughs> what up? Um, you got, like, 90% fake people and then 10% real people. And I feel like everyone out there is looking at each other for, like, follower counts and shit. I mean, yeah, you but that's everywhere, that? though, no? That's everywhere. I mean, but, yeah, out there, obviously, it's a lot more opportunistic. But, like, yeah. again, that, if that's the environment you grew up in or that's the environment you've been in for a minute, like, that's what you're you going to be on. But yeah, true. I think if you just surround yourself with genuine shit, then you'll get genuine energy uh, back. You feel me? The weird part about LA is just, like, they grow up not wanting – everyone there, for the most part, I feel like, doesn't want to do normal shit. The way that you're mm-hmm. saying it's, like, normal to them just being mm-hmm. like that. So. Like, what do you mean by normal shit? Like, just, like, they don't want to – Nobody in LA is like, okay, I want to go to school to be a professor or a I doctor. I mean, yeah, but that's like, just like, like when you're in LA and everyone's doing their own shit. And it's like, you can, like, I think, I personally, that's some dope shit to see. Because, like, where we're from, like, you're not seeing a lot of these black spaces and people just doing their own thing and running their own business. And out there, like, that's all, there's a lot of that. So. Okay, okay. Getting to the last couple of questions. This one, I'm going to get all the advice ones out here. Um, how do you recommend if somebody's like first starting out making music, mm-hmm. how do you think they should go about building an audience? And what do you think your best pieces of advice would be to maintain that audience? Um, I think definitely just start going to like the events that you know, like the crowd you want to be in, just start going to those events, like find them on social media, um, show love to the people that you maybe want to work with uh, or be in that space with, you know, share their shit, whatever. Um, pull up on DJs at their events. If you're about to start dropping music or you have music, pull up on them just to show love. Because um, then eventually you guys will build a bond and it'll be like, they'll play your shit off the strength. It won't be like, because you asked or anything like that. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I would just say those things, really. What about just getting the music heard in general besides that? If you got zero zero Instagram follower account, mm-hmm. you got to build an online presence. That's a better question. I would go with friend. whatever whatever your local media is. Start through them. Like whatever is popping in your local area, like go fuck with that and do that. Like right now, if you're from Boston, I would say reach out to Do Over Don't. Reach out to uh, uh, cham- uh, Chamber, everyone that was on the Chamber. Uh so many different ones. Now. Yeah, there's just mad different podcasts. C W T F B. Hope I said that right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's mad letters. <laughs> it um, is. Uh, the, the Museum TV. Uh, Shout out Noble. Fucking a lot of them. Mad shit. Just like whatever is popping in your city, I would just do that. I would just go to those media outlets. Boom, and then from there, maybe start trying to meet people, walk in with the engineer and cook up. What do you think the number one thing not to do starting up music is? Um, the number one thing not to do. Yeah, number one thing not to focus on. Oh, not to focus on. Not to focus on, or just not to do in general. Not to do. I would just say don't make yourself like mad, like inaccessible, or you know, definitely just don't make yourself too inaccessible. Just be able and willing to communicate and have like conversations with people. Uh, like don't feel like you're too good. Or, like oh, I'm better than you or nothing like that. Like I definitely that's something you wouldn't do. How do you identify being sold dreams? And have you ever been scammed? Have ever been sold a scammed? dream and been scammed? Like music wise, have yeah. ever been scammed? I've never been scammed. Uh, scam music wise, nah. <laughs> you haven't been. Normally, like, people what type got. Of we talk about nah. nigga. I'm like, this is taking a turn. Yeah, because no. we can talk about that if you want. But nah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, normally every artist I feel like has at least one story of getting scammed. You something. know what's crazy, bro? I've never got scammed music wise. But like obviously you first start fucking with like pieces and shit like that. Like you're gonna get scammed a couple of times. You first start fucking with the pieces. Like niggas gonna sell you some fake pieces that was already used. Clothes? Yeah. No, no. Oh. Oh. I what mean you pieces. You know? I mean oh. cards. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, but <laughs> I thought you were talking about clothes. That's why I like I the niggas talk about some clothes. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I never got a scam off no clothes. Um, what was this other part of the question you asked me though? I don't even remember now. <laughs> I don't even remember <laughs> now. I'm not even gonna lie. I completely. No, I want to know though because I was gonna answer that. I think I said, said what not to focus on. And the next thing you said was I said not to. Have do, you ever been scammed? That. And then 
Oh, oh have I ever sold you, dreams? Yeah. yeah, of course you get sold dreams. Niggas be chatting that chat. I was going to say, how do you identify it? If something's fishy. Honestly, bro, niggas could say a million things in the world. They could say everything. But if the actions don't follow, if you don't see those actions, like eventually, nigga, like it's, if niggas like, oh, I could do X, Y, Z for you next week and next week comes and it don't happen. And then next week it comes and it don't happen. Well, you might need to start thinking like, all right, like, so you're just chatting. Like, and you're being sold dreams. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you think the number one flaw is, like, all across the board with artists? If you had to pick a, oh, it a seems flaw, like you had wow. like, <laughs> no, if you, if you think if you think there's like one flaw that every artist has for the most part that they have to overcome, what do you think that is? Probably themselves, honestly. You gotta overcome yourself. That. Deeper than that. Deeper. That's the deepest it can be. Like, if you have got to overcome yourself, what do you mean by deeper than that? I'm saying more more specifically, I should say. Like than yourself. when I say yourself, I mean. Like, you might have a song that you're like, oh, I don't know if this is fire. Oh, I don't know. But then you literally play it for a group of people. And like, yo, this shit's mad fucking crazy. But, like, it was yourself. You had to get over that, like, because you're playing it for people. And then it's like, like, I've had songs. Like, even Hey Things Possible. I don't, I didn't really like that song when I first made yeah. it. Even T-Watt. He was kind of like, mm, I don't know. We got to go over and do this, do this, do that. And I'm like, mm, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I forget what happened. We just put it out like that. And it was like, oh. Fuck with this. Like, I had to get out of my own way. So, that was my biggest obstacle. Um, But deeper than that shit, I'm like, fuck, you want me to think, think. (laughs) That's good enough. (laughs) That's good enough. Have you um, had any troubles with confidence in the past, or do you feel like you were naturally just confident? Um, Confident, like. uh, Just as an artist, the way that you're talking about, like, people will hear their music's fire, but then they'll still be three years after them making music and haven't put anything out. (laughs) Um, No, I I don't. I don't know. I just always been like a confident person, I yeah. guess. You feel me? So if there's anything I was doing, then I'm going to do it to the best of my capabilities. Obviously, I'm a human. Sometimes you might have like natural human nature yeah. thoughts. But other than that, I've always been like, whatever it is, whatever I'm doing, I know I could do it and I'm going to get it done. So if you got introverted artists that are watching this, that they have troubles with the confidence, how do you advise they go about building? Bro, them? I'm probably one of the most introverted motherfuckers. But the thing is, I got better with it over time. You feel me? Like I said, like, if you're a gang, you know I'm goofy as fuck. I'm funny as fuck. I make, like, I say we do all type of shit. But if you don't know me, then you're probably going to be like, oh, she's on some chill shit. But if you're an introvert, I would just say just, again, work on being able to speak to people, communicate with people. Um, Don't think just because your friend knows this person or whoever on your team knows this person that you also don't have to know this person or talk to this person because, granted, they could do things for you, but it might be, it will be way more efficient and better if, the person on your team had a relationship with said person and you had a relationship with said person because they would want to do a lot more for you. Um, so I definitely just say that because that's something I had to work on, being able to like talk to people. Cause it's not that I didn't want to talk to people. I don't fuck with people. It's just the way I grew up, nigga, if I don't know you, I'm not speaking to you. If, you, if we even look at each other three seconds too long, I'm thinking what's the problem. We got static. So that's just kind of how I came into it. That's just how I've been as a person. If I don't know you, I ain't saying shit. So I had to get out of that. And really just be able to talk to people. So, yeah. Besides, well, that seems like it wasn't really too much of a problem for you. But what do you think your biggest fuck up in your career has been? My biggest fuck up? Biggest fuck up. Um, hmm. But you had to make that fuck up to move uh-huh. forward. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every time you do that, you have an answer in your head. And then you got to, like, filter through to find one that's more appropriate. <laughs> Are you trying to analyze me, gang? <laughs> like, mind your business. It is an interview. Fair <laughs> point. Yeah, that is a, my biggest fuck up. Um, I want to call it a. Well, yeah, I think maybe probably just my biggest fuck up in life sometimes is, um, like I said, yourself. Sometimes you gotta listen to yourself. Cause you know, you might be listening to other people, or listening to this or that, and it just don't pan out. If you had listened to yourself. So at points you didn't go with your gut and you were kind of listening to what everyone else around you was saying more? Um, Like a little bit, or maybe just some ways that you think things should be going. So maybe you don't do this or that, not even listen to people, but maybe you know you, like, oh, this is fine, I should do this, but, you know, maybe you just, so, wait a second. Do you think that artists need to travel to, like, pop? Um, or do you think you could stay in the same state your whole life? And I guess it just there? depends really where you're at, you feel me? I guess it just depends mass. on where you're at. Well, uh, yeah, because you have, like, people like Russ. He's from Atlanta. He just stayed in Atlanta. And he found a route that worked for him, which was SoundCloud every Friday. And then 
dropping these albums where he doesn't really need anybody. Like, so that worked for him. And you have situations like some in Massachusetts where I don't know, like you might have traveled other places and stuff, but still Massachusetts is your course. Yeah. I think it just depends on what was meant for you, really. But traveling is obviously good. See different shit, do different shit, talk about different shit, see different hoes, fuck different bitches. I don't know. If you a girl, fuck different niggas, you feel me? Like, you know, get some different dick. Different experiences. So, yeah. What would be the number one thing anyone that's just starting out right now you would advise them to do first? First thing to do, first step in their career. Like once the music is done? No, I'm saying they don't even got the music <laughs> yet. They ain't got the music yet. You got to create a character, blank slate. Blank slate, boom. Start making some music but figure out your sound like you feel me like what type of beats are you trying to vibe on like what type of artist are you are you like trying to do dance music are you like just what are you trying to do and just don't do shit that you think you should do like do what you want to do um yeah then start going to the studio or get your little home set up going you feel me um then get them songs made how do you think artists should go about marketing themselves uh, well, yeah, you just have to figure out your self, really. Like, figure out who are you. Are you going to sell your actual self, who you are? Or are you about to come up with, like, maybe a little different image and sell that person? But you got to figure out what it is that you're selling. And then just put that put that shit out, basically. But just make sure you're true to it. Because like, you got niggas like Boom Gang or stuff like that, where you're doing shit that's not really you. Eventually, that's going to die out. Die out. Not being yourself. Do you think that short form content is killing art? What's your thoughts on the short short form game? In terms of what, like 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 TikTok or what? Yeah, just like TikToks, the reels, because now it's like you got people that spend all this time doing mm-hmm. music videos. Yeah, and then motherfuckers are just watching the reels. Even this podcast right now, yeah. the views are probably gonna get thousands <laughs> of views, and then like a hundred people might actually watch the full episode. People's yeah. attention spans are just fucked right now. Well, yeah, people's attention are fucked. So you gotta go. You gotta cater to what works for them. I, I wouldn't say maybe it's fucking it up. It's like that's their f- that general TikTok is really for what 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 age range would you say is for? I don't even know. TikTok's for everybody, yeah. you feel me? But in terms of the music just spreading so fast and the kids making these fucking challenges and shit, like I really feel like that's some high school, early college shit. So if that's how they're digesting shit and that's what they're hearing, then cool. Like people could have probably said the same thing about SoundCloud, like, Oh, how do you feel about them navigating away from iTunes and shit? But that's what worked for us at that time, so nah. What do you think your most effective form of marketing has been? Um, if you had to pin it down, the one thing that you think has brought you the most fans, what would you say? Mm. Sorry, you know, I can't listen to two things. Like <laughs> <I know. laughs> the thing that I would say, I guess just, I guess just being myself, you mean? I never really tried to do too much or do this or do that or fucking... I'm not, I never tried to do none of the gimmicks. Like, of course, I, I could have been a gimmicky person and doing shit that's for gimmicks. But I guess just really being myself and just making the shit that I want to make, that I want to create. Because uh, I just really speak about the shit I'm going through. And if you fuck with it and you resonate with it, cool. Let's vibe. If you don't, cool. Like, I ain't tripping. So, yeah. What would you say the number one thing you hate about this industry is? Or you could give a bullet point list if you got multiple. <laughs> um, Just mad calculated, you feel me? Like... At a certain point, it doesn't become so fun with the calculations and shit like that. You just want to make music. Yeah, I just like to make music. But then you just have, like, uh, it's just mad calculated, bro. Like, pay for play, payola, like, even down to people selling, like, packages, like, bundle packages for the albums to, like, make more album sales. You feel me? Like, yeah. One of the last questions. Probably got, like, one or two more for you after this, but. You saying the pay to play thing? What's your thoughts on all the fake shit? All the people bought in their shit up, buying streams, buying followers, X, Y, and Z. What's your thoughts on that whole side of the industry? Uh, like I said, I'm not here to judge, but um, <laughs> so <laughs> judge, <laughs> judge. Like, I'm not here to judge, but nah. I mean, I I guess I get it in terms of the look standpoint. You feel me? Like maybe you want to look like shit's going a certain way, but again, at a certain point, that's gonna die out because it's not authentic. So. Uh, you seem like you're holding back. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you, I don't know. Normally, people are passionate about that one. No, nah, I mean, if that's what you went to, you feel me? Like the, that's not what I'm into. But yeah. if that's what you're into, if that's your bop, then 
I don't think it's necessary. I think it defeats the purpose. Like it might give you that look, but I could tell off rip if oh you have bots following you. So yeah. it kind of defeats the purpose. You feel me? And you got people that work really hard for this shit, and it's out here trying to get it. So if you're trying to take the shortcut, I don't think people really gonna fuck with that. But like I said, it's not my bread that I'm spending. It's not my my business. So yeah. I want you to break down talking about bread. Investing in yourself as an artist. What is your thoughts to all the people out there that they think that they're going to make a music career without spending a dollar? Yeah, good luck, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> like, the good amount luck, of people buddy. that genuinely think that, though, is crazy. Or they think that they just have to pay for a studio session and there's nothing past that. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Oh, you got to pay for a whole lot of shit before you even, like... You got to pay for the mixing, the mastering, the cover art, the video, the... Shit that you're going to have in the video, like the props. You got to pay for the fucking, if there any rentals are needed by the cameraman that day, you got to pay for that. If you got to have bitches come through this or that, you got to take care of that. Um, and that's just getting the stuff together and packaged. And if you want to do merch, you got to pay for that merch. If you're trying to do an event, you got to pay for that, that haul. You got to probably pay for somebody to help you out for the day. And this is all again before the, the tape's even out. This shit is fucked. <laughs> this shit is <laughs> fucked. Anybody that's watching this, if you do not want to spend money, do not do music. <laughs> hey, but now you know, you feel me? You could be that lucky one, you feel me? Just drop that one joint and it works out for you. You could be. You never know, so. That shit is more fucking unlikely than hitting the lottery, I feel nah, like. Nah, it is, but you, you could be that one in that you million, nigga. You could be that one. You do never know. Yeah. I'm going to end this off on hopefully a funny note, but it might be a sentimental note to you. Yeah. I want you to give... It could be either something good, mm -hmm. something bad, mm -hmm. something sad, whatever it mm -hmm. is. I want your favorite memory that's camera friendly throughout your whole entire music journey. Like something directly related to music that is just like a memory that, like I said, it could be good, bad, whatever it is. Just something that pops into your mind. One of your favorites. Uh, I got to think, bro. I'm like a thinker. I got to really think about <laughs> shit. Tell. When niggas ask me questions, I really got to think about shit. I could like, tell. I can tell you a lot of crazy shit that's happened throughout the year, but I'm like specifically music. I'm like one night niggas had a party. It was all of us. Oh, you said camera friendly. Okay. Oh, no, it could be. You can say it. You can say it. No. As no, long as I it's just, not going to get anybody indicted, it's good. No. I mean, for me personally, I just like the good nights. You feel me? The little, some Janini's, nigga, some Shanini's, nigga, some Shorties, you know. More than one, you know. <laughs> yeah. We've had nights like that, like those nights. You seem like a big partier from this pod. <laughs> Don't even say you're not, because almost every other sentence has been about you partying. Nah, I feel like. a partier? No, I'm not a partier. Party. But I like to go. I like to go to events. <laughs> <laughs> They're all looking nah, like. What? I like to go. I like to turn up with my niggas. <laughs> Feel me? Yeah, I like to do that. That's a good time. Um, but I'm like, damn, a crazy moment. Oh, you know what's crazy? Actually, I one time I went on tour with Michael Christmas, and um, we got to the hotel room, and I had to go to the hotel, and um, there was a chicken bone on my floor. What the hell? There was like a a yondum in the corner used, a used yondum in the corner, and it just smelled like ass in that bitch. I, that's something I'll never forget. That's something I could tell you right now off rip. Like I was like, there's a chicken wing in my room, my nigga. Like. We was in, like, some random-ass place, bro. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the stories, a chicken wing and a used condo. Out of everything. <laughs> Out of everything. That's what comes to your brain. No, I'll never forget that moment. Um, I don't know in terms of music-wise. <laughs> don't even put this in the interview. <laughs> we'll like, definitely don't, don't even put this part in the interview. We'll cut it up. I we'll don't know, bro. I'm like, shit. <laughs> we'll cut it out. We'll cut it out. I don't know. I've got, like, food poison. I got food poisoning real bad one night. Oh, but we're talking about music, though, specifically. The way that you said the tour story, it could be something like that, where it's like you were doing something music, but it wasn't 100% music. We don't even have to. We could skip that and just do the outro if you want to. Well, no, because I really am, I really am wondering, like, what's some crazy yeah. shit that I have dealt with music. Stolas was his... Ankle monitor ripping off, falling down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> that shit had to be the funniest shit anyone said on this show. Yeah, nah, fucking. 
bro. I'm really like a thinker, bro. Like, I'm not good <laughs> with fucking questions on the fucking spot, bro. I'm not going to hold you. I'm probably the worst person to interview th- you then because I don't write questions down or anything. I just you ask just whatever pops in my ADHD-ass brain. Yeah, no, I feel that. I don't even know, bro. I have a, I don't know. I have like just random shit. I have a song called like Tell Me on my first date. My father called me like, is that about me? I'm like, nigga, no, it's not about you, nigga. I'm not even think about you, bro. That was yeah. funny. I'll hey, never forget yo. that shit, bro. Hey, yo. You got anything else you can think of? Oh, you know what? There is this one thing that's crazy through music. There's this one girl that every time I run into her, she starts crying because she sees me like... And my man would be like, yo, that's her. But they're like, yo, go say what's up to her. Like, like happy crying? Yeah, like, because she's seeing yeah. me. And I'm like, whoa, like, I'm like, I'm just me. Like, I, I'm like, wow, you're crying over me, Jordy? Like, yeah. that makes me feel good inside. But then I'm also like, you're crying over me, Jordy? Like, is everything <laughs> good, baby? Like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, that's why. Jesus Christ. How is that? Like, my artist that I manage, they just got their, um, like, a random fan just got his lyrics tattooed on them oh, and wow, that was crazy up. but yeah. like literally seeing it sounds like it's a grown-up seeing you cry yeah. like cry from meeting you what the fuck is yeah. that even like <laughs> it was I, I was like okay this is cool this is different but it <laughs> was weird <laughs> like a little i could imagine a little level of weirdness like, damn yeah that well, fucks with it i guess uh, that's yeah. fire though that goes to show how much you impact people if you literally got people crying <laughs> over seeing you <laughs> god damn <laughs> Like, that's like some like shit you see about like Drake when you see the girls like crying because they met yeah, Drake and shit. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm like crazy. I understand that, but I'm like damn sure do you think that of me? Well, thank you because I think that of me. So, that should show shit, you that yeah. you're doing something right. Yeah, I appreciate that. That should show you you're doing Love. something right. Yeah. You got anything else you want to add on? Nah, I mean, you got anything else you want to add on? No, well, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. My name is Vintage. Shout out to all. I was about to say, I'm about to say some dumb shit. Shout out to Do Over Don't. <laughs> 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 yeah. We out here Grease pack out soon You feel me If you don't fuck with niggas Fuck ya I don't know um, Yeah You got anything you wanna say That's Good. it Thank you for coming on the show Nah thank you for having me I'm gonna have real. to make sure To send this shit to Chris I'm probably gonna call him When I go to work tonight you know? I know I'm like I'll call the man right now <laughs> I'm gonna have to call him after you um, But Thank you for coming on the show Seriously yeah, of course I'm like yeah well, This was very like music oriented You know I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Because I'll be watching the interviews. You'll be asking, like, some interesting questions. Thank you. I didn't know you were watching them like that. No, I watching interviews. I thought you was going to honestly ask me some interesting questions. Interesting. Like some non, you know, I thought we was going to get to some. But this was Some nice. more wreck shit? Yeah. But some this was, yeah. I had, to, was nice. I had to tread cautiously. It's my first time doing a podcast with a female. Oh. <laughs> but see, you see, I told you about that. You said with a female. We see with just people. Well, but you, I, in my defense, see, I'll ask questions in the background of the other one, and they'll be like, you can't ask that on this podcast. Well, you know what? Anyway. Here's the thing. You're right about that. Because I told you. Like I said, like, I'm a stud. You feel me? So it's a little different. Like, yeah. That's like, I don't know. Like, I could see things being murky with you. I could see you I'll, feeling like that. But I was having my inbox blown up a month ago calling me sexist. So and no, being I feel you. I feel you. You feel me? Well, then shit, you probably don't want to. We probably you don't probably don't want to talk about like that with me because they'll definitely be calling you sexist then, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say some wreck shit would come, but see, yeah, you probably don't talk like that with me then. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a part two eventually. Yeah, we'll, we'll do definitely a do a part two. two, man. I definitely appreciate you having me, bro. Thank like, yeah, I appreciate huge you. fan of the pod. Thank you. Thank you for I having appreciate me. Appreciate you. Of course. Y'all motherfuckers Cheers know the drill. Yeah, cheers. I don't got, I got an empty ass cup, but cheers to y'all. Y'all motherfuckers already know the drill. Be on the lookout for, is it an EP or is it like a full length project? You it's a project. Grease pack project. on the way. Need for speed video out soon. Yeah, man. Y'all already know. Go run up that Uno feature in the meantime. Run that too. shit up, boy. Y'all already know. It's Check that booty. <laughs> <laughs> y'all already know. Check the description. Follow motherfuckers. Subscribe, like all the corny YouTube outro bullshit. I'm tired of saying this shit. Purple World, this been episode 104, whatever the fuck episode it is. We will see y'all next week. Peace. Rihanna, Judge, I fancy you like who I need that. Need the Fendi loafer with the double shop to kick back. Hey, a shopping spree. Let's go do the shopping spree.